Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope we're well. I hope you're all doing well today. All the graduates, congratulations on your graduation. You know, congratulations on your graduation. Amen and amen and amen. Mm, amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Um, just a couple of announcements and we'll go again to the teaching. The first one is... Um, um, we are weeks away to Next Level Conference in the UK. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're a few weeks away to Next Level Conference in the UK. And we're asking that all of you that know or have friends in the UK, if you get those cards, you can use it to invite your friends in the UK. If you get those cards, you can use it to invite your friends in the UK. So if you want, if you have some friends in the UK or you want to invite, just raise up your right hand and we can give you those cards to use to invite them. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Another person, thank you so much over there. Yeah. If you just provide us the names, thank you so much. Yes, if you get those cards, we can use to invite all of the friends you have in the UK. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just raise up your hands above your head. They will give you the cards. You will put your name there and their own contact there. And we'll be able to send them some invitations for them to attend. Some invitations for them to attend. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, quick announcement. Um, next level, so Next Level UK is July the 1st. Next Level Conference Canada, Toronto, Canada in August. Yeah, Next Level Conference, Toronto, Canada. Are, are you going to be there? The way you're smiling, are you going to be there? Will you be in Canada by that time? You'll be in Nigeria. Where will you be? Somewhere. Oh, wow. Okay, because I, the way you're smiling, I thought you were going to be, I saw your husband looking at you, so I thought that you were going to be in Canada at that time. You know, it's going to be nice. So NLP conference in Canada, the dates are on the screen. So you can begin to help invite all of your friends there. Um, just two announcements. Um, um, yeah, of course, there's a lot of church plants and activity. We're starting a church in Toronto, Canada. We're starting in London. We're starting in Birmingham and Manchester. I'm saying so because all of these have already watch parties and if you have friends there, you can, you know, begin to ask them to come and to come and join at this time. So it's, it's, it's going to be a great time. Amen. Amen. And lastly, the business acceleration course for today, only today, we have a discount of 50%. Yeah. So what that means is this. Um, why the course? We're asking people that want to train to do better in business and, um, you know, that if you just go outside there, you get a discount for for 50% today. If you want training, mentorship, investment into your business, do so today. Do so today. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's wonderful. All right. If you have a testimony to share, let me see you rub your hands. Um, we had a big series on overcoming depression. I would love to hear your stories on how you've been able to overcome. What has happened in Newton? You know, tell me, well, how are you? It's nice to see you. Do you need a hug? Do you need a hug? Okay, come and get a hug, yeah. It's okay. He needs a hug, you know. It was, last year was very tough for him, so, yeah. That is his social media work. That's, that's not how it works normally, but this is social media work. Let me give you some more space so I can walk the walk. That's a social media hug. Yeah, you hug like a big boy, like a pastor, don't worry. <laughs> hmm? You're even tapping me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, so um, how many of you have been going through a depressive season and you've really gotten help? Things have gotten better. You've learned how to manage what you're going through better. Any, yeah. I would love you to share some stories. Hence Raised Up. You know our church is a sharing church, so it's not new to us to share. We love to share. Yeah, Hence Raised Up. I would love to hear some stories before we start teaching today. I'm looking because the stage is bright, so I've not seen any hands up. That's what I'm asking. Where? Oh, one of the HSAP students. Oh, fantastic. Okay, there's someone over here. Yeah, let's give him the microphone. Good. Michael, I didn't see you in all the services, just the fourth one. You not do fourth service alone? Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Uh, my 
name is Kwame Stein. Actually, um, the question has um, different levels, actually. My was um, too deep. Yours was too deep? Yes, please. My parents happened to be um, a minister in Assembly of God Church. So, uh, forward to when I came to Lagos, things were too tough. I slept outside for how many nights? And um, forward to when I gained admission, um, study computer engineering in Yaba Tech. I did that for two years. And during my final year exams in school, I couldn't write it because of 77,000 naira. So I dropped out of school. I've been working, 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 working. Um, forward to where I just resigned March, things were still a little bit tough. Yeah, the teaching helped me because I was so depressed. I stopped talking to people. I had no accommodation. Things were just up and down. So I just, um, through your teachings, I understand a whole lot. I changed my mindset and I started talking to people. You know, now things have changed actually. I saw the head start program, so I started to join and I've learned um, how to snap pictures. That's photography professionally. Yeah, so I'm so grateful to God. Yeah, I'm doing better now. Thank you. Ah, okay, that's great. Okay, so um, this time last year um, was a very hard time for me. Um, I faced a whole lot. I lost literally all my money. I looked at it just disappear in front of me. And it was a lot for me. I was so depressed. I was isolated myself. I, okay, it was even probably towards Christmas. You know, people were celebrating Christmas, but I was home, you know, shedding tears. And I stayed away from my parents, from everybody. I lost my relationship. I lost my heart. You lost the volume also. <laughs> Can you have another microphone? So what changed and how did it change? Praise God. Any other person before we get into this te today's teaching? I'm hoping I can do two teachings at the same time. Teach about this, then move into the believer's authority. I think that everyone needs to hear a message on the believer's authority. Okay, anybody, anybody, any person? Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And a lot of male are talking today. Are they, where are the female? They are shy today. Oh, wow. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You need to be a lot louder than that. Uh, can you all hear me now? We are hearing you strong. Where's the microphone? You is that the one? What's that? Who is he? Who? What? Oh, that's the guy from Zimbabwe. Yes. Oh, thank you. I was not looking at him because I can't see that you know that far, like because the light in my eyes. Yes. Go ahead and tell me. No, 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 no. I want a better microphone. Please give me a better microphone, please. I need to hear this Zimbabwe testimony. Wow. This is my brother from Zimbabwe. 
Remember his story? Maybe we'll do a before and after story. He was breaking down. He said that nothing is working. He thinks he's going to fail. That the only thing good in his life is his, you know, and all of that. Yes. Hallelujah. Since that time, um, I spoke out. Uh, it was during the period of uh, self-doubt and it's very deep with the person. So through that time, I stood up in church and I shared my story. Things really have changed. Right now, we're looking at something big in our life. We have met people. And, and, um, so wow. Um, Praise the Lord. Um, we are opening a new company. Everything good is happening. So we thank God. You need to tell me so that we can support you just to get ahead, no matter how we can do that. To give the microphone to your wife. Let, let, let's, yeah, I know your wife is going to like try to pass out. So what, what has changed? What have you noticed? towards him um, I think a lot really that's a lot that's a lot just the fact that you can even admit that you used to be frustrated angry and take the anger out on him and now you're more supportive that's a lot and he needs all the support thank you thank you for being amazing let's give it let's appreciate her for for that also glory to God any, any more person that wants to share yeah, that's a lady over there. You know, until you, you know, the story starts lighter, then it starts getting deeper. That's how people are. Yeah. There's a lady, someone over there. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay, my name is Joyce John. Um, Your name is what? Joyce John. Joyce John. It's a yes. pleasure to meet you, Joyce John. Excuse me, Pastor. Okay, um... How do I start? Um, my thing is concerning my health. We had two, yeah, I think this month will make it two years. I was diagnosed with, um, they said I had a tumor um, somewhere close to my heart. And then, um, okay, and then, um, I don't know if I should tell the story. If I have the time to. Well, you just give it, give it two, two minutes. Just two all minutes. Right. So it all started. I was having chest pain, and then I complained to my doctor sister. I, I told her I was having this pain close to my heart. I thought it's because I used to drive a lot, you know. And then she was like, "Okay, go to the hospital." So I went to Ever Care. They asked that I run a test. I did. I went to Mikio. I did the test, and then the report came out. And then they said um, they can. There is a max close to my heart, and then I was like, hey, Max, I was like, okay, what's that? So I immediately called my doctor's sister, and then she said, please send me all of the report. I did, and then she, okay, because she's a doctor, so she has um, access to all of those people. So she shared it with some of her colleagues, and then they saw it, and they were like, oh, um, let her come immediately. Because in, um, I think in her care, they, their procedure is just too long. Before you could see, um, the doctor, you, they had to book an appointment and all of that. So I traveled. I went to so what Abuja. Happened? So that's how the journey started. I was supposed to have, um, have an open surgery, which I did. I had an open surgery. They took out the tumor. And um, fast forward to this year, that was in um, February, I started having the pain again. And then, I'm sorry, give me your tissue. I started having this pain again this in February, and then I went to the hospital. I've done a series of um, CT scan. I have a lot of it. And then they said, they can see something growing close to my chest. My heart is very close to my phrenic nerves. One of my lungs is not working that well right now, they said. And then, the doctor was like, I was like, what's this? So someone that, someone recommended this hospital to me. Um, uh, what's it called? Somewhere around V High. I went there, and then the doctor looked at my report and said, oh, we can see something, so you have to go do a PET scan. 
So I went to Mikia, somewhere around Oshodi. I did a PET scan. The first scan came out, and then they said, oh, what you can see, it's a tumor. It's growing again, and all of that. So, so what has happened right now, and where are you with all of this? Okay, so they said I have to do an open surgery again. Yeah. And this time they said um, they'll take out the, the tumor and then probably take off one of my lungs. And I'm like, who lives with one? They said you can live with one lungs. And I'm thinking, how? How is that possible? So when the doctor was having this conversation with me, it came in from America. He said, oh, we're going to be having the surgery in um, Evercare and all of that. So it was a lot for me to digest. I was like, okay, what's going on? You know, so I looked at the doctor. I said, this will be the last time I'm ever going to go through this. This was the same thing I said to one of the doctors in Abuja when he said, you have a tumor. I said, I don't have a tumor. They said they saw something that they want to take off. I'm fine. I'm perfect. Because every time I, the, I remember the first time I went to the hospital. So I tell went, me exactly, you know, yeah. Tell me exactly where you are right so now. So right now, I remember the first time I came to worship here. We were preaching about fear. Because every time I sleep, I feel like I'm going to die. Like, I'm, I live in fear, actually. So the first time I came here, that was um, last month or thereabouts. You were preaching about fear, the spirit of fear. You know, so it was as if you were speaking. Actually, you were speaking to me because I live in fear. Every, I don't sleep. I can't sleep. I sleep. I am coughing. I'm always scared that I'm going to die. I have just one position now. If I'm sleeping, I have to sleep upright. You know, I have to pad up so that I can breathe well and all of that. So I, when, you, when, you, when I came to church the very first time and I heard you talking about conquering fear and all of that, you know, I held on to that word and I started praying. I've been meaning to meet you, Pastor. Honestly, I came here on Wednesday. For Wednesday so what has service. happened? Okay. So where are you right now? Right now, with the whole series, I have been able to build my faith. And I've yeah. told myself that I am not going to die because I have God and I know the child of who come, I am. Come, come, come. Come. Come, come on the stage. Come with her. Take the microphone from her. So they said, your lungs and... What is it? So which of the lungs is it? Out of her now! Out! Out! Thou spirit of darkness, you will not have her. You have been set free. Yes. Clean by the power of God. Yes. Your lungs, your heart, your body. Clean by the power of God. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Help her up. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. You know, the amazing thing is that when I was praying this morning, I saw a vision of me praying for a lady. So, in the first service, but in all the services, I've not had time to be able to pray for someone. So after the third service, after this was happening in the third service, I didn't think it happened in the fourth service at all because the fourth service always has its own trajectory. So, so I was like, so in the third service, when I went back to the office, I had some people with me, and I felt very bad because I was like, because when I was praying for the service in a certain way in teaching, God particularly called my attention that is. I should minister. And I said, okay, that's fine. And there's a way I will pray if I want to minister. So I said, okay, let me pray. So I did some other preparations that way. 
But when it happened the first, because I was hoping that I would finish preaching early. In fact, in all the services, I ended up praying for the sick or something. So in the third service, because there was no time, I just prayed generally, you know. But after I left, I was like, was that what I was meant to do? But that was not what I saw this morning, you know. And then we are in the fourth service. <laughs> you know. So lady, you need to, you know, you need to put a lot of picture of life and health on you. A lot of picture of life and health on you. Don't allow the picture, the picture you see often becomes your future. So if the picture of death and all of these things is what you see, and that becomes the future. But if right now you see yourself with a picture of a miracle and life and health and free, that's what you will have. Amen. All right. Quickly. Um, yeah. So if you are going through, if you are going through um, some kind of depression, I just want to say one thing. If you're going through one kind of depression, if something is depressing you that you cannot change, you know there are things that depress you you cannot change. Yeah. When things depress you that you can change, the approach is to change it. So, I give an example. If you, what can you change that can depress you? Tell me something. Tell me something. What can you change? M maybe you feel as if you stand up. Stand up. So, maybe you should join the protocol after today. So, after today, go and join the protocol. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's say that you assume, assume that you feel as if you're too big. Can you change that? You can with weight loss. Or you don't have muscles. So you're depressed that you don't have muscles. So what can you do? You can change that. So that's something you can change. So if there's something that depresses you that you can change, what do you do? You change it. But there are things, thank you. So we just use it for example. If you're depressed that maybe, you know, anything, you can change it. But there are things you cannot change. Example. For example, if you're single, can you marry yourself? Exactly. You can only walk on getting married. Your marriage is in the hands of somebody else. Or not or connected to somebody else. That's a better way to say it. So, this is what you do with depression. Whatever you can change. So, watch this. I wanted to watch this when it comes to depression. Whatever you can change when it comes to depression, change it. But whatever you cannot change... When it comes to depression, change the way you think about it. That's my new style now. When I make a point, I don't clap. This is your clue to clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, how do I know? Let me show you in the Bible. Hebrews, there's a Bible principle. Hebrews chapter. Hebrews chapter 12. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Did you see something? He, he, the cross was what was before him, but the Bible says, for the joy before him. What was before Jesus Christ? The cross or the joy? No, come now. What was really for Was it the cross or the joy? What just Christ did was that he took the joy that was behind the cross, brought it forward. He made the joy his focus so that as he, as he walked towards the joy, he changed the way he celebrated. And let me give another scripture. Oh, someone say, it's the book of James. James. Oh, glory to God. James chapter 1 verse 2. So, how do you deal with depression? If there's something you cannot change, for, let me tell you what you cannot change. Yesterday, myself and my friend was talking and we spoke about my mom and my eyes just became teary because from time to time I just miss my mom. Even though we had this great love and hate relationship, you know, but I really miss my mom, you know, and my, my parents are dead and sometimes if you're not careful, you just struggle. You just struggle like, you know, I've not been able to even go back to our tomb, you know, like, I go to that cemetery to attend to Ernest's funeral, but I cannot stop where she's buried because I'm just, I'm not sure I can deal with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to break down and cry. You can't even see my voice is cracking. Just, 
just talking about it, you know, because, oh, wow. <sighs> you know. But I can't change that. I can't change my mom died. But if I don't want to continually experience pain, what I would change is the meaning that I give to that. And what is the meaning? The meaning I give to it personally is the fact that there's a meaning I give to my mom's death that I grew. It was my opportunity for growth. So see what James 2 verse 2 says it. Let's read, let's read together. I want to go. Count it what? When what? I'm not sure if you can give me the message of, of passion translation. It says, count it joy when you have difficult time. What he's saying is that you cannot change difficult time, but change the perception. Let's see what it says. Count it a sheer gift, friends, when test. See, count it what? A sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. So, it didn't say that they are gifts. It said count it as gifts. You know, you, you know it's a different thing. It, it is as a gift. It said consider it as a gift. So, four price has increased. What can you do about it? What? Four price has increased. What can you do about it? You can be, choose to be frustrated and be like, do, 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 do. I understand because it's frustrating. But count it as a gift. I'm like, wow, four friends have increased. That means that if God is my shepherd, he has found a way to increase my income. So, let's say you were dating someone and the person left your life. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Lord, because thank you, Lord, for not allowing me to marry the wrong person. I can't, leave, you know, give yourself meaning that gives you joy, gives you peace. That's what you should do. So let's go back to it. This is, a, this is all I have to say about this subject. And we're going to jump to Ephesians chapter 1. 1. Maybe there's a third part to it. When things happen that causes you depression that you can control, what do you do? Control it. But when things happen that cause depression you can't control, change the meaning. Does this mean something to someone right now? If it means something to you, just, I want someone to share like a story or something. If it means something to you, change the meaning you give to it. Change the meaning you give to it. Let's say that you happen to get pregnant as I wedlock. It's not something you should be proud of. But change the meaning you give to it or else you will feel pain all your life. And let me tell you something else about depression. Even things that within your control, a lot of you are depressed, not because the thing is depressing you. What is depressing you is the standard that you've given yourself. I know people that get married and have huge expectation of their partners. And in the real world, it's not realistic. I'll give an example. A lot of you here, some of you love you. Some of you here are below 27. And below 27, when you want to live in Ikoi and have a Prado, and have this and this. You know, I wish you all the best. You will be mostly unhappy. The reason why is that sometimes people set goals that can easily depress them. You must be careful about setting goals that can easily depress you. The first person I date will be with is the person I will marry. It's, it's, it might easily depress you. The reason why is that from history, people don't, people, apart from Adam, and they had no choice. Yeah. So, when someone says, the first person I date is the first person I will marry, question, is that the desire of the other person or you are making a decision for them? So, sometimes people get depressed because there's a standard in their mind that is not realistic. Yeah. So, you must fix it. Does anybody have something to say quickly? Yeah. Anybody? You understand what I'm saying? Is it applied to you before? Yeah. I have one person here, but I want someone else to share that doesn't really share. You know, another person. Okay, give me the microphone while others are trying to say something. Tune Bali, say something. Yeah. Tune, come, come and say something. Yeah. Give Tune Bali the microphone. At least you have all this experience. You can, yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, so, um, I made a major loss in business a few years back. Um, to a lot of people, I mean, I'm talking of hundreds of millions of um, naira. To a lot of people, they might see it as a spiritual attack um, or a, of, of an attack somewhat. But coming to church and listening to you, it's made me realize that it's not actually a bad thing. I changed my view of the losses. I saw it as an opportunity for growth. I saw it as... Um, my, my view changed about it. So it, it stopped from... It changed from being depressed about the loss to actually be grateful that I'm still alive and I can make more. That's great. And what has that done for you as a person? You know, as a person, what has that perspective done for you? It, it's helped my, my thinking, understanding that I have a bigger capacity to make even more. So, so you, it makes you more aggressive to pursue, right? Exactly. Exactly. That, that's where I'm going to. That's where I'm going to. So you need to ask yourself, someone breaks up with you and says, people don't love me. What would that lead you to? You lose money and you'd be like, I can never do well. What would I lead you to? So what happened is that he lost hundreds of millions. But the question is this. When he lost hundreds of millions, he made up his mind that the perspective is that this is an opportunity for me to grow. So if an opportunity for him to grow, what happens? Then he began to grow. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's share one more story. Yeah. Just go ahead. It's not working. It's not working. Will you use my microphone? Yeah, this one is working. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, so oh, he's working now. Okay, let's go. So mine is about was about relationship. Okay. I had a terrible breakup and um, it affected me so bad that I mean physically my waist size from thirty eight got to thirty four. Your waist size. Yes. So at some point in your life you were bigger than this. Yes. Oh I was, wow. I was dancing in church one day and my trousers almost like fell off. <laughs> It was so bad. And the lie of the devil was that good guys don't get good relationships. Good guys don't yes. what? Like ladies will always treat you anyhow because yeah. you're good it, guy. Notice something. Everybody knows something. When you go through your toughest time, be careful of new theology, philosophy that emerges. Most of them are destructive. So as he went through that, one philosophy now says good guys don't get what? Good relationship. In other words... To get a good relationship, become a bado. So, yeah, so yeah, I continue. Was, I was with a life for the longest of time because it was a pattern. Every relationship breakup, it reminds me. They tell me, in fact, that you're a good guy before they leave. And then, <laughs> until this year, uh, sorry, uh, until this year, the Holy Spirit, through your teachings, sat me down. One day, I cried in church, and I got home, and he said... You were crying in church, yeah. Yeah, he said, Francis, 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 how about your relationship? I knew that something was up. And he, learned, he, he made me understood that because you're a good guy does not mean every woman should date you. Don't you think you have things you should learn? And then it was clear, I don't even want a relationship. Like, I don't want that attachment anymore. I want to learn. I want to be friends to people. I want to see the world in a different view. That means because you're a good guy, you must not be dated by everybody. You know the bad thing about that lie also? When it says good guy gets bad girls, that philosophy is also a defense for you. Because instead of you to help you look into yourself and reflect, there's nothing to correct. They leave me because I'm good. So you also don't become better. Meanwhile, you could be good and there's an area that you're not great at that leads them to that breakup. So this should help you self-reflect today. Glory to God. Wow, great, great, great stories. I'm loving it. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. So remember, remember quickly, remember this quickly. If it's something I cannot control, I change my perspective of it. What can you not control? You were raped when you were seven. You can control that. Change your perspective of it. What can you con con not control? You got pregnant at 18. Change your perspective of it. And give yourself a perspective that gives you hope, that gives you joy. Like James chapter 1 verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. I wish I could tell you I've not made mistakes, but that's not true. That's not true. So James, um, so Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to talk a little about the believer's authority. But I'm going to ask you to please go online and watch the full message. I'm going to just give you, 
an excerpt, but go online and watch the full message here. Watch the full message. And, and the reason why this message is powerful is that huh, there are some things that support can handle, but there are some issues that naive spirits, village people enter the matter. And you must know how to deal with negative spirits. Ephesians chapter 1. So this month in all of the other services, I'm teaching about the believer's authority. And I'm teaching about it because, you know, I did not grow up. When I grew up and began to be a Christian, I noticed that a lot of Christians were afraid of devils. A lot of Christians, their prayers was all about devils. Like you attend a one-hour prayer meeting and half of it is die and fire and fire and die and fire. You're not praying for yourself. You're not talking to your father. You're not talking to the Holy Spirit. You're like, you're not speaking in tongues. I'm like, why am I talking about the devil? God did not invent prayer to talk to the devil. He invented prayer for himself. So if, if half of your prayer is demon, 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 there's something wrong with your prayer. If you talk more to your enemy than to your friend, there's something wrong with you. The believer's authority. So when I got born again, I got born again in the very great Bible teaching church. You know, when I come with a mix of people, people, you know, and unfortunately, let me say something to you also. The more you are conscious of demons, the more you see the works of demons. Why? It's the law of focus. Whatever you focus on manifests. Either you focus in prayer, and that's why you notice people that pray a lot about demon and die and fire, they see a lot of demonic things in their life. If we hear the testimony in the church, people always vomiting, people always spinning, people don't buy cars, that's never the testimony. They, you know, they're always vomiting, they're always spinning, that kind of thing. You know, because the reason why is that the focus has been on evil spirits. There's an extreme where people be like, it's not like evil spirit, that's also an extreme. But now, does the Bible speak about demons and evil spirits? The Bible does. But the Bible speaks about it from our authority over evil spirit. Listen to me, everybody. We, we are not in competition with Satan. Satan and demons have been defeated. We are meant to exercise the authority that Christ has given us already. And that's what it is. So when it's, you know, I've seen Christians, when they can be sitting down, I'm saying, Father, I love you. They're talking to God, consecration, mission, work. But once they say, let's bind evil spirit, they'll just stand up. Ah, kabaye. Ah, shabayaya. Kabaya boyaka. Aha, real prayer. Because in their mind, real prayer or difficult prayer is the prayer I have to stand up to talk. Listen to me. If I was standing up to pray before, when it's time to bind demons, I will sit down. Because I'm just dealing with someone that is defeated. I don't fight for victory. I fight from victory. I don't pray for victory. I pray from victory. I come to the devil saying, I'm the victor and you are the loser. I'm the overcomer and you are the overcome. And based on the finish, that's why when you hear me pray, I always say this, based on the finished work of Calvary. What does that mean? It was on the cross of Calvary that Jesus Christ paused, paralyzed, demobilized, demolished all principalities and powers. He made an open show of them, triumphing over them in it. I said, based on that finished work, I'm not here to do another work that Jesus has done. His work was perfect based on the finished work of Jesus Christ I've stepped into it and I'm emphasizing authority somebody say amen there's something the Bible says that's very instructive the Bible says when Jesus has got to heaven he sat down most of you don't know how instructive he sat down is before Jesus Christ no priest ever sat down you know why all the priests were always doing offerings because the offerings was never done. Jesus Christ was the only priest that sat down. And he sat down just because it was finished. That's why when he died, he said, it is finished. So as a Christian, you need to live from a place of authority in Christ that this is finished. They say there's an altar in your family, you see? <laughs> He said, the problem is that you're connected to, you're connecting what is not connected. Which family am I from? 
the bible says this when he died i died with him <laughs> the one that is connected to that altar died with him he said when he was raised from the dead that's a new creation he says if any man be in christ he's a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new the one that is tied to the altar has died this one is a new creation born in christ jesus raised in christ jesus but taught in christ jesus somebody say hallelujah say i'm a new creation in christ say all things are passed away Behold, all things have become new. Glory to God. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. Romans says it this way. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Ephesians chapter 1. Glory to God. Be careful how you talk about yourself. I'm not the one looking for prayers. I'm the one that prays for people. The major problem with the authority of a believer is this. This is the authority of a believer. Huh. Let me ask you a question. Have you been arrested? Have you tried to be arrested by a policeman that has no uniform or ID card? What will you do? Give me a microphone. Give, give you. Give, give us the microphone. So the question is this. Give the lady in blue, yeah. Lady in blue. A police, this guy said he's a police officer. Has no uniform, has no clothes, has no ID. He comes to arrest you. What will you do? Ah, pastor, sir. He will get out of the room. He'll get out of the room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What will you do? I will finish him. You will finish him? <laughs> See, the reason why you're finishing is that no authority was presented. Yes, sir. The major thing with Christians is that once you don't have, once you don't know your authority, even though you are there, they will finish you. Like the lady said, he said, it, it will finish you. And this is a problem with this generation of Christians. We've not, authority is found in the word of God. We've not taken time to value Bible study. We, we love, we love. Give me a song now. My daddy, my daddy, your baby is singing. I want to sing and, you know. See, that's great. But you need something deeper than singing. You need the word of God. Listen to me. You need to find time to stop the Bible and find out who you are, what you have, what Christ has done. You need to find out to do that. So, Genesis chapter 1, verse 17. Oh, is it from verse 15 we're reading? Verse 17. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 15, rather. The Bible says, this is Paul praying for the Christians. Wherefore, after I heard of your faith in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ and unto the saints... And love for the saints. I cease not to thank God for you, making mention of you in prayers. Leaders, this is how you pray for your members. This is a prayer point of the Spirit. Look at verse 17. What is a prayer? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. He was praying that they would know something. Why? You cannot exercise authority you do not know. This is why you have, they say you have spiritual husband and you think so. And they all down, they're kissing you and sharing in bed, not paying rent. How can you have a husband that does not pay rent? He only comes at night when he wants to get action. Because you don't know who you are. So Paul was saying, he says, Paul's prayer was that they will know. See what it says in, verse, in the next verse. He says, not only would they know that it will affect their understanding. That, that's what I'm going to. Your deliverance will come when your understanding is affected. Once you know that if the spiritual husband comes, I can dismiss him. Aha! Uh -huh. Deliverance has come. He said that the eyes of understanding may be enlightened. That they may, what again? No. Know what? Number one, what is the hope of the calling? Number two, he says this. 
And what is the riches of the glory? There's a glory of his inheritance in the saints. He says he wants you to know it. Then the next thing I want us to know is this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To what us who believe according to his what mighty working power. He says, I want you to know what you carry. He, he says, I want you to know what you carry. There are some things I don't share. The reason why is that, you know, a lot of pastors know how to booga. But those that are close to me will remember. Some years ago, I used to live in Ogudu GRA. So from the Bagada church, I was going home one evening. And this has happened to me twice. I did it different occasions. Three times, actually. I was driving through the Ogudu, Bagada to Ogudu place, has traffic in the evening. A thief just came. One of the boys brought a gun. My window was down and pointed it at me. and said, give me your phone and your wallet. To be honest with you, if I had my memory collected together, I will give you my phone and my wallet. Because in my mind, how much is phone and wallet? The two of them, one million, we lose it and continue life. But as he said it, the anointing just came on me. I said, in the name of Jesus. I didn't even know why I said that. And the guy just ran. The same day when I was shot last year. You, you remember the story, right? If you don't go to my Instagram, it's there. I was shot at. I was shot at. Documented story. It, a lot of blocks carried it. I was shot at. I was praying near my house on Admiralty Way. It was about 4.30 4 a.m., 4 a.m. And I thought these guys on Okada, one had come down. You know, they were standing there. I even thought the Okada broke down. So I walked past. I didn't know they were trying to, you know, do something. As I walked past, you know, I just had my earphones in my ears. It was 4.30 a.m. I was just praying in tongues before next level. Lege, ragado, brade. And the guy just came and just said, and just said, give me your phone. And I was going to drag it. And I didn't know why I didn't give it to him. Next thing I said, I said, in the name of Jesus, and he fired. Listen, the guy, if this pulpit is the guy, this is me here. I don't know how you will fire in this distance and miss. But you must know what the Bible says, that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. This Christianity that you are afraid of wizards, this Christianity that a Christian is wearing bracelet from online to find husband. You are buying them something online. Aramashan. What do they call those things? What? What? Blue eye. Tell me another one. Eh? Kayama. Kayamata. The reason why you don't know who you are. You that they fear. You are now bowing down. Glory to God. Are you hearing me today? See what it says. See, the Bible is describing what we have. It said the exceeding greatness of his power within us. Chapter 3, verse 19. Same chapter, same book. Chapter 3, verse 19. See what it says. See what it says. He says, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to ask you, once you are filled, what can enter what is full? He says, God says, look at you. You are full with the fullness of God. Question, where will marine spirit enter? It's full. Once the pot is full, the pot is full. I'm full. There's no space for another spirit. Then look at what he says. Let's read the next verse. Ha ha. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. It says this. Verse 20. Go ahead, sir. It says, let's read it again. I want to go. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask of great according to what? Where is the power? Where is the power? Where is the power? I thought you were powerless. 
That's why there's a song I used to sing before I stopped. Send down power. Holy Ghost power. I stopped singing that song because I didn't want to influence me to think I'm powerless. He said, he said, the power at work. Hey, Bashata. You know, I said in the other service, I'm a mobile powerhouse. Ah, yeah, yeah. If I step into a meeting, power steps in there. If I go into a house, power steps in there. If I go to an office, power steps. I'm a mobile powerhouse. Hey, don't play with me. I'm a mobile powerhouse. Look at him, say, you look at him, say, I'm a mobile powerhouse. The Bible says, power is that work in you. You know, there are two words, there are a couple of words used for power in the Bible and interpreted differently. One of them is called exousia. And the better translation of the word exousia is authority. It's delegated power. It's called authority. Then there's dunamis. Dunamis is where you get dynamite from. Dynamite means something that by itself can explode. Dynamite is the ability to do. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I needed to realize that you have authority and you have power. And we're going to close with this. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's read once go. Behold. Hold on. Let's read together. Once go. Hold on. He gave you authority to tread upon serpent and scorpion. Continue now. Hold on. It says over some power of the enemy. It says over all the power of the enemy. I want to ask you, your house of now confesses the witch. Why are you begging her? Why are you begging her? He said, please, oh, my mother. My, they get the 16, oh, my mother. You, you are 48, oh, my mother. Just go. I will pay you for one year in advance. Don't touch anyone. And the guest keeps saying that. I will show you. She be back. We get. I will show you. I will take your case to the manning wall. You say, please don't take our case to the manning wall. Take it. Is this some name you want or middle name? Take it. Take it. Let them see the power of God. Don't you know what the Bible says in the book of Exodus? It said, there's no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there what any divination against Israel. Uh-uh. Who do you think we are? So because we wear suits, you don't know there's something inside. He said there's power at work with us. Don't be deceived by the weak. <laughs> don't be deceived by all this coca. If we enter power it on. <laughs> are you here somebody? He said there's power at work in us. Let me show you what authority is. Where's my brother? Come. Can you take out this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Just look at his size. Look at look at him. Look at you. Sincerely, just if, if, if this guy wants to rack you, do you think that <laughs> you, you would, most likely you will knock him out. But if this guy, you're on the road and this guy says stop, will you stop? You will stop. Why will you stop? He says, I will stop because of what? The uniform. What is uniform? Is authority. Question. I know demons are older, but it's not really about you. It's the uniform you have on. It's the uniform you have on. The name of Jesus has been put on you. The armor of God has been put on you. When you show up, they know you in hell. The demon said, Jesus, I know. He said, Paul, I know. You are known in hell. The authority of God is in your spirit. The problem is that you keep telling yourself, uh -uh, I don't even have muscle. Oh, I don't have five power. Look at this guy. Look, look, look at this one now. Look at this one. You say, this one is well fed. The, the, if this one give me go, you know, I'm looking at the demon. But and God is saying, stop looking physically, look inside. There's power at work in us. Because it's not about who I am, it's about what? The uniform. The uniform is my authority. So I may just be that girl that speaks. Queen's English, you know, Pastor Bay, 
when I came back from the UK, you know, I was so hot in you. It's okay. With your heart in you. Once you can say in the name. <laughs> Once you can say in the name, the demon will tremble because it's not about phonetics, it's about the name, it's about the authority that you wear. Thank you. And see what he said. So you wake up from your dream, you had a bad dream. You say, Hey, I don't know, stop talking like that. You have authority. You say, In the name of your, I cancel the dream. Someone says, I will deal with in your office. Say, hey, pastor, he's known for charms. And so what? If he wants to play, does he not know who we will play with? Does he not know who we will play with? He now chose you to play with you. Let him be known for charms. Okay, show your charms. One, one, of my friends went, one, of, one of my friends went to the village. As they went, they were doing you know, all this um, like village traditional rites. So there's one, one white and red. And he was, I say, ha. Ah. He said, leave me, daddy. He said, eh? How can you talk to me like that? Do you know who I am? So he just brought out this horn with red something. And I said, Pua! as he was making the conversion, my friend just collected it. <laughs> he just collected it and slammed it on the voice. I break the power of the devil. The guy just said, hey, you are playing with death. He said, you want to die? <laughs> the reason why you can talk like that is because you know who you are. You know your authority. See what the Bible says. He says, he has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Then he tells us a protection promise. He says, and nothing shall that be any means able to hurt you. One time we had, when I was young guy, we had one house, one house up. My mom used to have a very loud voice. So I just called you, Paula, gee. You know, we had a big house. So she can call you from one end of the house. You have to in there. So I, was, I grew up always saying, yes. Because once you answer my mom, once you come, when you eventually hear, the first thing you get is a dirty slap. That I've been calling you since and you're not answering. Pa! Slap in advance. So, one time, I didn't even know who called me. And he said, yes! And really, it was never me they called, but it just sounded like me. So the house now said, hey, stop answering like that. This is how they call people and they answer in the spirit realm. <laughs> that you just say yes. You know, you know have you watched this movie before? Fundo, 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 yes. Chidedu, this is for Mama Dora Village. Chidedu, Chidedu, yeah. So, because of that, the guy said, Don't be asking that. And you know, that thing struck with me. First of all, the girl, first of all, that's not how it happens. Those are Hollywood movies, so that's not true. But you don't understand. My name and the name of God is merged together. If I answer, God answers. The reason why is that, why is the Holy Ghost inside me? So, when I say yes, how many of us are saying yes? Me and the Holy Ghost are saying yes together. So, when I say yes, even if there's an attack, it will backfire. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So we have authority. It's not about how we feel. It's the uniform we have. And the last thing is that we don't have authority. We have power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So it's one thing to have authority. That's the right. But we have power. The ability to do. So if you're fighting stuck, we have power to move it in the spirit. If you have delay, we have power to break the power of delay. Show me, give me power. See what power looks like. My God. Where's my, where's my friend? Come. Give me the, I'll be careful, the gun is heavy. My brother, don't shoot, though. Don't shoot, though. Just tell anybody to hands up, he does not hands up. Tell them to stand up, he does not stand up. Uh -huh. I want to ask you, point at this guy, he'll be saying strong. <laughs> the reason why is this, are they standing because of his size? No, but he has power. There's God in our spirit. Though. We have power. See, it his size is not 
relevant. It's the power that controls him. If someone comes here with a bomb right now, will you say this small boy? No! You will grenade. You will have run away first. When you get to Obalende, you will not call and say, ah, imagine you know, that small boy brought grenade to church. Oh. That's what you'll be saying. You'll not say, I ah, know this small boy. See, it doesn't matter what your size is. Once you have power in your spirit, he says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, glory to God. Ah. <laughs> this is not 007, no. This one is more than 007. Praise God. We have authority, we have power. You know why I prayed for that lady? It was the power of the Spirit I released into her. And saying, whatever is wrong with the lungs, let it be fixed. Whatever is wrong with the, with the, with the goods, let it be demolished. The power is the ability to do. It can, it, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it can do and undo. It's a part of the Holy Ghost. Did, did you read the Bible? I, I'm going to close with this because I'm getting too excited. Jesus Christ got to the tomb of Lazarus. By the way, join the 1 p.m. Thanksgiving tomorrow. Very significant. Join next level tomorrow, 1 p.m. Thanksgiving. Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, Father, I thank you, you heard me. Then he said the amazing thing. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Have you asked yourself before why he didn't say come forth? You know, the tomb in the Old Testament or in the Bible is like our own graveyard. Because many people are buried in one tomb. It's not just one tomb. If Jesus Christ had made the mistake of saying comfort, the one that died 100 years ago will have received the word because the word carried power and it will have comfort. The one that died 200 years ago will have comfort. If Abraham was there, it will have comfort. He had to be specific so that the power can know where it's going to. He said, Lazarus, comfort. The problem is that you are more specific with your direction of power. I command my income to rise. So I say, how will it happen? Just begin to prophesy. You will declare, the biggest deal in my field come to me. The biggest appointment in my field come to me. See, you are releasing power. You are releasing power. You are releasing power. When it's full, it will empty. Praise God. Ezekiel 37 verse 7 as we pray. Oh, glory. Stand on your feet, everyone. Let's pray. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. How do we release our authority? Through words. How do we want to release our through, through words. See what the Bible says. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. Can we read together? It says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied. Ha 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 ha. Somebody say, aha. Say, aha. Say, aha. He said, as I prophesied, there was a noise. As you prophesy, right in the hospital, right in your body, right in the clinic, right in the, in the home affairs, there will be a noise. He said, the second thing, there was what? He shaking. Remember, he wasn't touching anything. He was just prophesying. He said there was a shaking. Then what happened? The bone began to come together. The one that needs to talk to someone begins to talk to someone. The one that needs to connect with someone needs to connect to someone. I wanted to prophesy. What do the rest of the year be looking for you? Lift up your voice and prophesy, everybody. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Speak into your business. Speak into your children. Speak into your health. Speak the word of God. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. You've got the power. You've got authority. Go ahead and prophesy. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. As you prophesy, the shaking begins. Go ahead and prophesy. Every influence of the devil, we cut it off. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. As you have prophesied, I declare that so it is with you. 
begin to express the fruits of your prophecy in the name of Jesus every influence that is not of God walking against you by the power in the name of Jesus I cut it off I cut it off thank you father in Jesus name we pray praise the Lord hallelujah you know on Friday next level there was a powerful testimony a lady maybe in her 20s she was not sexually active her tummy began to grow the doctor said she was pregnant he said doctor I can't be pregnant because I'm not having sex and before she knew it she looked like a six month old pregnant woman and the UK doctors could not detect what was in her belly I wanted to look at the picture well, you see this woman and say she's not pregnant. And she was going to hospital for six, for, for weeks and months. They could not treat her because it was, it was not a fibroid. She joined Next Level Prayers. As I was ministering, I mentioned her name, mentioned where she was, mentioned her clothes. I said, in fact, the doctor said not fibroid. That's the gift of the Spirit. I said, the power of God comes upon you right now. She says, I said so. In the UK, the power of God touched her body. She felt something. He said, instantly, she felt like going to the restroom. She went to the restroom. Clots of blood, four clots of blood came out. The stomach went down instantly. Showed up the next picture where the stomach went down. Look at that. <laughs> question, question. Why did the stomach respond to the authority? Because of the power of God. I declare every influence, that is not of God working in your health, in your body, in your spirit, working in your finance walking in your job in your marriage walking against your marriage i command it to be cancelled i say cancelled in the name of jesus receive wholeness by the spirit of god in jesus name we pray praise the lord did you receive it so when they say they're looking for prayer i say come to me because i now know who i am some cases of depression are demonical. You just look at the devil and say, Come out! Praise God. Get out of this place. Praise God. Yeah, don't be looking for... You see, I'm teaching you how to get... Let me tell you something. What I'm teaching you is me losing my job because what pastors do is to treat... is to challenge you to depend on them so that you can keep coming back that I have to see my pastor I have to see my pastor but with this one you can do it for yourself because you know you have the authority and power in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you can have your seats